hello again. I'd like to give you guys a little update on the tool. Uh, we added a new feature and also I'll go through some of the little changes we did, some of the adjustments to hopefully make it better. Before we go to the new tool where you can add like inspiration uh, to your inputs, I'll just quickly run through the smaller tweaks and changes that are not as apparent just to give you guys a little like patch note uh, for the tool. So one big thing that you can't really see at first is the refiner. Right now it's not on the left anymore, so there isn't like a setting for the refiner because it's not technically a setting, it's just a refiner for the image. Uh, so it's not here anymore. Instead, when you upload an image, so if I take, let's say I brought this uh, image here, now on the bottom right of the image you have this refine button and also it has a tooltip if you just hover on it um, to give you a short description of what it does and all, we also fixed how the refiner works so there was a little you would still get the like close to 4k uh, image out of it but it would not always result in like the sharpest possible image um, so we, we changed the way it, uh, the upscaling is, uh, is handled and the refining is handled. So now you should get even more crisper and more consistent um, uh, refinement result. So that's a little tweak that you can probably notice once you start refining. The other thing is, I mean, the tooltips, we already had them, but I, uh, I can also show you. So if you hover on any of the settings on the left, you will see the tooltip for each tool, so you can get a sense uh, what they do if you like, if you if you were unsure. There's also some tweaks behind the scenes, just some like error handling uh, stuff like this to uh, make it more solid. That being said, we can kind of jump on to the topic at hand, which is the inspiration uh, tool on the left. There. So I'll I'll just open a better image to like show this around. So. I'll, Let's use this as an input, just so I can show you like how does the output change based on the inspiration. And so I have this Volkswagen bus. Um, before we go to the tool, I'll just generate some outputs to get a sense of like, where's the model right now? Where does it want to go to? And then you'll also see how much it changed based on what inspiration I used. So in this case, um, so yeah, 0175, 0 0.8 is usually fine for most generations. Shape control. We don't actually care that much of the shape. We kind of want to keep the Volks, uh, Volkswagen bus aesthetic, but we can be more free, no, free on the design. I'll first try 0 0.5. I'd already code it 2x because I have a some sense of what the output will be. Shape definition, general detail. We don't really care about the shape that much uh, because we also want to give it some freedom with the inspiration. So I'll just use general and let's generate. So, okay, here's the first output. Um, still kind of looks like a bus. It's sound to go a bit wider here. I'll just go back and I'll... Let's do 0 0.75. Okay, here it's a bit too traditional, um, so I, I do want the more freedom, 0 0.88. I can even try, let's say, 0 0.35, and like, before using the inspiration later on, uh, maybe we want to retain the Volkswagen vibe, so I'll just uh, mention here on the description that it's a front three-quarter of a Volkswagen bus concept okay. okay here so you can see the output um, it's very kind of concepty Volkswagen pass uh, thing but we can also see that it has enough freedom to go away from the original features and the very old school uh, style now that we have this base we can see what happens when I add an image so on the left you see this inspiration tab and you have add image so if I, if I scroll a picture from here, let's say I use this as inspiration and you can see here, you have a little preview of what the current image is and you can then just remove it if you want. Uh, inspiration influence, let's use like 0 0.75 as it is right now. 
just to get a starting point. If it's too wide, we can reduce it after. Okay, so here you can see how it's not just taking the shading, but also it's just to like try to treat the the image the form language with the input image. Right? Like if we look at the inspiration, it's really like this boxy filleted, uh, like metallic uh, look. And then here it's a aesthetic. I don't know if I would do it like this, but you can see that like the inspiration, you can use it to affect not just the shading, but also the shapes that it tries to generate based on the inspiration image. I'll just run it again so you can get a sense of what's coming every time I press. Here again, you can see that it's very, this producty, boxy thing, but I still tries to keep this Volkswagen bus aesthetic. Um, it's kind of an interesting exploration. Even if, like, especially in this case, since we're not that strict on the input sketch or input image. So it can go away from the shapes and kind of start soloing based on, in this case, the inspiration image. So now let's go back and let's use another inspiration image. So you can see the difference just based on nothing else changes other than the inspiration image and how it can change the output. So now I have this as inspiration. So it's this very sharp, metallic, very cold um, feel. And let's see if that can, like, we can bring some of that feel into the bus we are doing at the moment. So again, the settings are the same. I'll just, I just changed the uh, image and let's see how it will come out. Okay, so here we have the first output. It's very, I mean, very cold. It's still kind of soft. I, I wonder if I keep pushing uh, and I'll change some of the settings to try to get even more of the sharp um, feel to it. So I'll go back. I go higher on the uh, inspiration influence, maybe because slightly lower on the shape influence. So it has a bit more freedom on the shapes. Okay, that's interesting. It still has those fillets and stuff, but you can see it's starting to get in the right direction. I'll, I'll keep pushing it to see if I can find even better um, feel to it. Okay, that's quite interesting. Um, I'll just run the refiner to get it upscaled. Actually, one thing that also one of the users uh, noticed that it's sometimes actually useful to run the refiner a few times to let it process a bit more and more of the image. You can also do it without running the refiners or then rather running like 0 0.5 on the model influence. I, actually, I can show you like if I do 0 0.5, in this case, I can remove the inspiration image since we already had that feeling in the image. Shape control doesn't really matter that much because the model influence is anyway very low, so the image won't change that much. Now it will, with the model influence being lower, it won't go crazy, so it will just look at kind of generally what it would tweak. Yeah, and then here, okay, I'm kind of already happy with the general shape and there doesn't seem to be that much to fix from like errors in the image. Obviously, if I have a different intention with this sign, then I will take it to Photoshop and edit. But in this case, like if I just wanted some exploration and ideation, this kind of already works. I will again just run the refiner one more time just so we get the final high definition image. And I'll show it to you here so you can kind of see the um, final final generation of what we what we did. So yeah, that was with this image. Let's now again try a different uh, image to see what we can get. Let's try the picture of an iPhone. So let's try with that. So I have the image here. Um, let's keep the same settings other than just bring up the model influence back up to like 0 0.8. Everything else, I'm fine. Let's figure out where it is and then we can tweak if it uh, goes wild. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe it's still a bit too conventional for what we're trying to explore here. So I'll let it be even more free. So I'll go back, reduce the shape control to 0 0.2 and maybe we can even pump up the inspiration. Basically with the inspiration, you have to be a bit careful. The more you pump it, the more it starts to look like the original image. 
So if I was at like model influence at one and I had shape control all the way to zero, then it really almost tries to recreate the original image. Like here, for example, you can see that it's too far. I cannot, I cannot push it that far. So I'm going to just go back. Go, yeah, let's go back to 0.8, I would say. And shape control closer to what it was, but not as far. Okay, that's more interesting and it's much more clean. It's also interesting to see how it treats the Volkswagen bus feature there. I will go back one more time and I just try to almost have kind of the similar background. So I'll just reduce the model influence a bit. And hopefully still can bring that iPhone or the inspiration image in the generation. Okay, another output. It's actually pretty interesting. Maybe I'm already happy with this. I mean, it looks fairly clean. Again, if I had a different intention, I would guide that with my own input uh, by doing it on the image. But in this case, uh, I'll just go to the next one. I'll refine it and go to the next image. Actually, also, I'm interested to see what happens if I generate again on top of this image with the same inspiration. Like, to what direction will it go? That's also very interesting. Uh, you can see that it starts to do more like aligned and it gets an even punchier, like this purplish uh, hue from the inspiration. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so that's good enough for this example. Let's go to the next one. I I showed the shaver thing in the last video that it, it's pretty decent at doing product design as well. So I have one generation from that and I just want to see what it does if I use that output as inspiration for the bus. So let's keep the same settings again and just, yeah, let's see where we are and what we have to change. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. And it also has kind of this like blueprint style um, features on the, like in the background and so on. Uh, let's try a couple of times just to see what we get. Also pretty cool. Even the roof rack at the top, it used to have the scene like the shaver thing. It's not just the shading that it will like try to bring to the image, but basically any concept that's in the image. So you start to see like this very product design, I don't know, clips and stuff. That's what was kind of apparent in the original or in the inspiration image. Let's give it a final go. Okay, interesting. Kind of made it into like a transportation vehicle. Uh, so you, you, there's not even the windows anymore. Okay, let's try with the last uh, inspiration image before we end. I'm a very big fan of the Into the Spider-Verse movies and like just the artistic style in it. So I'll just try with some like random uh, screenshots to give a bit of that shading feeling from the movie into our generation. Obviously there's less of like the shape reference in the image, but at least kind of get this super crazy color space into the image. Okay, that's pretty good. And I, I got the style from the inspiration image. Actually, also a good note about the inspiration image is that the best inspiration images are where you have the essence of what you want to bring into the image. Like what we do in mood boards or inspirations as designers, we have a very like conceptually strong image and it just focuses on that uh, compared to like, let's say you have a picture of something or you have a car in a, I don't know, next to the beach or something. Because not only does it have information about the shapes, it also has concepts of like, oh, it's on the beach, there's water in the background, it has like older wheels or it's high off the ground, and there's a lot of concepts that it's trying to inject into the generation. So usually the best inspirations are exactly what we will use as inspiration in our work anyways where it's very essential in what you're trying to communicate to bring into the image. Like those images that we used at the beginning, where it's just like a simple product design or uh, some sculpture, those usually work very nicely. And the more kind of concepts you have in the inspiration image, the harder it will be for the model to try to inject all of those in there. 
one of them, for example, in this image that we, we didn't get in this generation, but you can, if your inspiration is too strong, that it tries to bring those people that were in the original image, because it's a very essential part of the inspiration image. And if you pump up, and I, I probably don't even have to pump up the inspiration for it to try to start to hallucinate people in the background, for example. And so let's see if I can do that just so you get a sense of what's happening. Okay, so here you can kind of see the example where it starts to hallucinate a, like a flying person because on the inspiration it had it. And it's an important concept of the inspiration image. So it's trying to inject it into the generation. And so that's something to, uh, that's something to keep in mind. Obviously you can, if you start to get stuff, you can reduce the inspiration, but you might also then dilute the kind of idea that you have from the inspiration image. So that's why like those images that you would use on a mood board or an inspiration board, those also work really nicely with the inspiration because they, they have a very essential meaning of what you're trying to convey with the output. I'll just do one more generation just to get a yeah, final image and then we can wrap this up. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'll just refine it and... Okay, good. And yeah, here we have the upscanned image. The, the nice thing is that like, even with the background, it's tries to do this like crazy, like glitch effect that it had on the original inspiration. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's the rundown of the new tool. If you, if you guys have any questions, you can just join the discord or DM me on Instagram. I'm also always really curious to see what other people can kind of generate with this. I'm looking forward to seeing if there's any cool outputs you can, you guys can generate from it. Um, but yeah, that's the rundown of the kind of update that we did and we'll continue developing this further, uh, to bring even more tools and features to use for designers and hope you guys like the new feature. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.